Hey guys, in this video, I wanna to talk to you about MLED GPS. There's a few misconceptions out there at the moment when it comes to the MLED GPS, uh, and I thought I might uh, do a quick video and just run through a few of them. Uh, those of you that watch my Instagram stories will see that I use this uh, to pick up my data. So if I'm doing a uh, cable pipe location, if I'm out in the street, like where the pipes are, where the cables are, the gas pipe, telephone cable, all that sort of stuff, um, and a client wants to, me to put it on a plan for them, wants me to map it all out for them, I'll use this skill. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll go and locate the data, and then I'll get this and go along and pick up each point and then draw it up on a CAD plan. But there's a few misconceptions going out because, because it's not a $30,000 unit like some of the other comp uh, competition, uh, because it's real user-friendly, real easy to use, because you don't need a complicated uh, controller, uh, you can just use your mobile phone, uh, because I don't even know why there's these misconceptions. I, I can I can sort of understand it because it's uh, because it's uh, real value for money. When it comes to buying equipment, buying stuff, you always think the more you pay, the better the quality is. So I can I can understand why, and I guess I sort of had the same misconceptions at the start also. Uh, but I use it. I've been using it for a fair bit now, and I really like it. I like it a lot. I love that it's real easy to use. That's what I mean. As you know, at first I love that it was value for money. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're all got budgets, so yeah, value of money was the number one thing, and secondly, how easy to use it, how user friendly it is, regardless of how cheap it is. If you can't use it, then there's no point. So you need something that's real easy to use. And a couple of YouTube videos, and there's your training. You can look at work out to use it. Anyone can get onto a job site and work out to use it. So that's how good it is. But what I thought I'd do, like we did a job recently, um, and I thought, well, I've got time at the moment. I thought I'd show you some data. And show you some data on, and it is so you can see uh, when it comes to accuracy, how how good the data really is, and how good the uh, accuracy really is. So let's uh, jump on the computer for a minute. Well, actually, we'll do a bit of both. I'll, let me put this down. So I've got the data on my phone, and what we'll do, we'll compare it to. So on this job site I uh, went out recently. Um, so obviously when it comes to GPS, uh, you've got limitations. Regardless of what sort of GPS it is, you've got limitations on where you can use it and so forth. This job we went out to was in the center of Geelong. Uh, we, were there, we were in the heart of Geelong. So you had three story buildings on one side, um, a little laneway where I'm in, and a cinema on the other side. So you're in a concrete jungle. Uh, I mean, yeah, three stories, maybe you could have, they could have been higher. If I was in Melbourne, we're doing high rises, but hey, they're still pretty high. For a GPS, that is, uh, let's expand it out so you can see how tall she actually is. Hang on, Let's see if I get it in camera. So that's it on the ground. So yeah, so it's 1.92 meters, something like that. So when you're talking, when you're right next to a three-story building, you do have limitations on, on how good it can be. Uh, and this job that we're at, let me put this down again. This job that we just uh, yeah, did a job at, uh, I like these sort of ones because, so what happened, so obviously we, get, we got called in to locate the underground services in the street. And a surveyor had already been there. So the surveyor had already been, had already done the feature survey. I love these ones when surveyors go first. So I should have clarified at the start, for those that don't know me and, and haven't seen my videos before, I'm not a surveyor. I'm a cable and pipe locator. We're not qualified surveyors. Those, remember I said before about those $30,000 GPSs, you can get the real high-end ones. They're great for surveyors. They're awesome for surveyors. I, there is definitely a place in the market for the high-end stuff. For someone like myself, that is just a cable and pipe locator, that's not a qualified surveyor. I never call myself a surveyor because I'm not a surveyor. For <laughs> uh, guys like myself, that all we want to do, I don't want to, I, the old days where you used to have to go out to a job site with your big clipboard and try and measure with tape and draw up the plans and do a map the best you can, those days are gone. Now we can get a GPS like this and go along and pick it up and it's so much, so much better time, uh, it's, efficiency is so much better now with something like that. So uh, yeah, so this job site here, so surveyor already been out. It really did the feature survey of the whole site. Uh, and then they passed the plan on to me. And on the plan that they gave me, they gave me some site benchmark details, which is beautiful. This way, I don't need to worry about going off and finding other benchmarks in the area and trying to pick up the data. Yes, it's good if you can uh, get reference other points, which is great. But if I've got data from the surveyor, so he's gone out, he's done his feature survey, and he's given me the data, or he's given it to the client, and the client's passing on to me. Um, and it says the actual benchmarks he's put on there. So he's got three separate points there that he's put on the, on the job site. At three different points, he's got the Eastern, the Northern, and the RL, which is beautiful. So when I go out on a job site with my GPS, I'll go along first to those three points, pick up those points, and this way I can then 
line up my plan and reference my plan onto those points and this way everything lines up correctly. So it just makes it a lot easier. So let's go through and let me show you what we'll do. We'll do a, um, uh, so, so actually let's, let's insert now. Those of you that watch uh, my Instagram stories uh, will have seen uh, recently I broke my camera. So on this job here, this is, the, this is the job that I broke the camera on. So I did get some footage uh, of me picking up this data that I was uh, trying to pick up in the, uh, in the yeah, laneway. The quality of the recording is very, very poor, but I'll still, let's still put it in this video just so you can see, so you can feel the job itself. You can see where I'm actually working so you can get a better feel for it. And uh, you can see a couple of the issues I had or what we'll do, I'll, I'll run you through it as, we, as the uh, video plays. Um, and I'll, and I'll, then I'll show you and I'll explain the uh, data we picked up. So let's, uh, let's do this together. Okay, so this is the job site itself. So you'll see you've got the cinema there on the left. You've got your three-story building on the right. There's me with my GPS um, and there's my little controller, <laughs> my mobile phone. Okay, let me just explain what's going on here. So when you first get to a job site, you've just got to make sure you've set up the system right. Put it on the right coordinate system, make sure everything's all, uh, obviously good data in equals good data out. So you just got to make sure everything's right. It takes, and it takes a bit for the GPS to find where you are out in the world. Obviously the GPS can work anywhere in the world. So it's gonna find where you are and everything else. So it takes one or two minutes. Where are we? Maybe three minutes max. What's that? 120, 180 seconds. It feels like a long time, but it isn't, it isn't that long. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so in hindsight, if I knew I was gonna be making this video for you guys, what I probably should have done is done a screen recording on my phone while I was picking up the data. So this way you could have seen exactly what I was doing. What I think I'm doing here is picking up one of the features uh, just to line up on a plan. I think that was a uh, water valve. Uh, actually, that's, yeah, that's a fire hydrant from memory. Uh, what I do what, while I'm picking up that, what I really uh, generally try to do is always pick up their benchmarks first, uh, but you walk past something. You just want to pick it up while you're there. Uh, what we'll do, let me just quickly show you so these are the three benchmarks, your benchmark one, benchmark two, benchmark three, and there's your Eastern Northern RL. What we'll do, I'll show you the plan that we, we did. So this is the finished product. What we did, we actually used a combination. We overlaid their plan onto our plan. No, our plan onto their plan, whatever. Uh, so some of the features are there, some, some of the ours anyway. Uh, what I'll do, I'll show you this though. So there's benchmark one down the bottom, um, near the road, benchmark two, is right there. Now, notice the high-rise building, the high-rise, the three-story building, so that's the cinema on that side, that's the um, high-rise building, or three-story three building on that side there. And then benchmark three is down here. Now, let's go back to the video again. Uh, okay, let's just pause the video there for a minute. Uh, so, for those of you that haven't used GPS before, GPS has got limitations. Uh, obviously, it needs to see satellites, to the unit, to the unit you're using, you need to see opposite satellite. So you can't use it under a veranda, uh, you can't use it underneath trees, and you can't use it right next to buildings. If you're right next to a building and a satellite can't see you, then you can't use a GPS because you're not going to be able to see the satellites. So, and a reminder, I did not pick where these benchmarks were. The surveyor went out before and didn't know I was going to be out there. He never knew I was going to go and do what I was going to do. He's just gone and done this feature survey and put the benchmarks at the best spot that suited him. So he didn't know that I was gonna be there. So he's put the benchmark right where I am right there. That's benchmark number two, right where I am right there. Look at how tall that building is. So, and this is the first time I've been out there. Uh, so, and you, as you saw, I'm literally just got the GPS out now. So I try and pick up data. And, and I sit there for a little bit, try and get it, try and get it, and nothing, can't get it. I'm too close to that building. Then I think, all right, let's try and get back out into the set where I can see the satellites again, where I could pick up the other, where I picked up the other uh, fire services before, the fire hydrant. So let's do that. Got it. And let's forget that be benchmark too. Let's just head up to the road and pick up the other benchmarks and whatever other features are out there. So that is what I'm doing. And again, apologies about the quality of the video, guys. Yeah. Really, I probably don't need to show you this, uh, but it's more just to show that where I am, just so you can get an idea of it. So right now, I am picking up the details of benchmark one, and let's pause it there and tell you the figures I have got for benchmark one is, let's load up 
MLID. Go to survey, open that. Let's go to the data, let down. All right, benchmark one was, let's go through. So East End is 268697.048. Norvin is 5774176.810. And the RL is 24.083. That is what I picked up. That's the data. That's the exact data I picked up with the GPS. That's for benchmark one. And then as I'm walking back down, I stay well away from that three-story building because I want to make sure I can keep a lock on, keep a GPS and I think, eh, why not? Let's just try again. You never know. I might be able to get it this time. And I try again. And wouldn't you believe it? I got it. <laughs> GPS, sometimes you got to get the unit to recognize where you are stay where you are a few times and then you can get it. So right then I got it. And the data for GPS for uh, BM2 is, let's go through. Eastin is 268707.153. Norvin is 5774206.295. And RL was 22.198. That was benchmark two. Now, benchmark three. See, I'm trying to get it on the nail, trying the best I can. Sometimes it slips off a little bit. <laughs> and I didn't collect benchmark three, and the data for that is benchmark three. That is Eastin 268724.267. Norvin 5774248.969 and the RL was 19.579. Okay, and we'll pause it there. I don't think you need to see any more of the video of what I did out there. Uh, apologies for the uh, video quality once again, guys. Uh, but yeah, as you see, the data is actually pretty good. It's not that bad at all, uh, considering we've gone from the surveyor using a total station and I'm using a GPS that costs less than five grand. Uh, and just to give you a bit more data, uh, that's using duration of three seconds. So I'm holding it there for three seconds before, before it takes a point, moving on to the next one. So yeah. Now, also I should mention, this is using Reach RS2. RS3, which is the next one I'm gonna buy, uh, has got the tilt correction. So obviously I'm holding it and trying to make sure I get the bubble lined up straight. Come on, get in there. And then when it's straight on, oh my God, I can't even do it here. I haven't got it pulled out, so maybe that's why. Anyway, um, you gotta make sure you hold it dead straight uh, with the, the, bubble, the bubble right in the center, and that's where you get your accuracy. So if I was out a little bit when I picked up any of those points, then the accuracy wouldn't have been as good. So that could be why it could be out a little bit. But I mean, like some of those points, it's, yeah, the, the accuracy, I think, is pretty good. See you guys, that is it. That is MLED GPS. RS2 Plus. As I said, I would be buying free. Uh, the, the big advantage, I think I mentioned it before, but the big advantage of free over this one here is tilt correction. So I could literally pick up a point right now and it would pick up exactly where it is right there. So underneath buildings and stuff like that, yeah, that's going to be so much better. But I mean, even this, the accuracy you're getting on this, <laughs> yeah, it's really good. I, I think it's a no brainer, isn't it? Like if you're a locator, a plumber, electrician, a landscaper, if you put irrigation in, if you do mapping, if you do any form of mapping at all, pay for money, it's a no brainer. For the accuracy you're getting, again, I'm not saying if you're a surveyor, although I do know a few surveyors that are using this because it's, it's so good value for money. Uh, but yeah, I do, I do. there is a place in the market for the high end stuff, for the, for the controls, for when you're doing all the other stuff. But for what we do, guys, yeah, highly, highly, highly recommend it. Uh, if you have any questions at all, leave a comment below. And if not, I'll see you on the next video. Take care, guys. Bye.